the show along. All right, back with part four of Damnable Heresies. All right. Listen, I don't want to get deep into it, but let's to show you people, okay? This is Isaiah 24, 21, 22. And it shall come to pass that in that day that the Lord Yahweh shall punish the hosts of the high ones, those who will be the international banking families, the Rothschilds, Oppenheimers, Rockefellers, etc. All right? That are on high, right? And the kings of the earth, upon the earth, all right? They're world leaders, all right? They're puppet world leaders, you know, your presidents, prime ministers, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Let's go to verse 22. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in a pit. In other words, a pit is dungeon. And shall be shut up in the prison and after many days be visited. Let's jump to uh, Psalms 149, all right? Again, I'm not going to go to all of them, people, all right? Because I want to take you to some other stuff here. Psalms, uh, what is that? 149, I said. 7 through 9. All right. We'll start here. Okay. Uh, I'll start at verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. That's talking about the elect of Israelites. Okay. This is after Yahweh has taken everybody down, as we just read. All right. You know, that they will be thrown into a pit. Okay, so let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth, talking about Israelites, and a two-edged sword in their hand. What for? Let's find out. To execute vengeance. You see that? Not love. Okay? Not love, not forgiveness, not repentance. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. That starts with the tabernacles of Edom, the white man, and punishment upon the people. All right? the other heathen nations, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. Cling, cling, cling. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Got that? Verse 9, to execute upon them the judgment written. For example, Revelations 13 and 10, he who leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay, what is that? Uh, Exodus 21, 16. If a man stealeth a man, or if he be found, all right, in his hand as in possession, he shall surely be put to death. Did that not happen? Is that... Did not slavery happen? And not just finish reading Revelations 13 and 10, he who leadeth into captivity? Yeah, it happened. It's real. Okay? All right, what about Jeremiah 30 and 16? Okay? What about there? What about Jeremiah? Let me finish reading this. So, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all the saints. Who are the saints? The elect of Israelites. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 30, 16. All right, let's do that. And there are many more people, you know, scriptures one can go to. Therefore, all they that devour thee, what does it mean to be devoured? Okay, that means to be destroyed. Okay, that's what it means, to be destroyed. All right. Therefore, all they that devoured, destroyed thee, shall be devoured. They're going to be destroyed. They're going to be devoured up. Okay? And all thy adversaries, I repeat, all thy adversaries. Does it say um, just one nation? Does it say a few nations? No. It says all thy adversaries. That's all 17 heathen nations, starting with Esau, the white man, plus the other 16 heathen nations. That's who it's talking about. So, again, all thy adversaries, Esau, Edom, plus the other 16 heathen nations, every one of them, see, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prayed upon thee will I give thee for a prey. There you go. 
How hard is that? How hard is that? Okay? All right? All right? And you'll find stuff like this. Uh, let me go here uh, quickly over here. Let's see. Psalms. Uh, what is that? Psalms, what, 14 and 7? You'll find plain things like this. What does it say here? Oh, that the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion. See that? That the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion when the Lord Yahweh bringeth back the captivity of his people. Jacob shall rejoice, right? All 12 tribes, and Israel shall be glad. There you go. You see? Does it mention any other nation? No, it does not. Okay? It does not. And there are many like this. Okay? Uh, I already read you Luke 1 and 68. There's a whole bunch you can go to, people. All right? Whether it's Psalms 25, 22, Psalms 77, 15, Psalms 30 and 8. All right? Um, Psalms 135. All right? And 4. All right? Uh, here's another one here. What is this? Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. All right. 32 and 9. All right. And it'll tell you that, you know, Israel, Jacob, is the lot of the Lord's inheritance. Okay. Does it say anybody else here? For the Lord, Yahweh's portion is his people. Right. Israel. Right. The 12 tribes. Jacob. Right. All 12 tribes is the lot of his inheritance. There you go. Okay? And don't let somebody try to deceive you, man. Let's go to Revelations. We're going to go on a blue letter. Give me a minute. This is Revelations, the seventh chapter, which clearly tells you that, you know, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, okay, that are, you know, are of the elect, all right, plus there'll be a great multitude, because this is what it'll tell you here, all right, it talks about the angels holding back the four winds, which is is talking about the destruction till they get the green light, all right, but then it says here, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God power in their foreheads, right, all right, and when you go, uh, what is that, Ezekiel 9 and 4, all right, and it talks about the mark, all right, meaning the seal. Well, that mark means that you are exempt from judgment as being part of the elect, okay, of the judgment that's going to take place here on the earth, all right, at destruction, all right, whether through that thermonuclear fire from the ICBMs or the concentrated laser fire from the chariots, so on and so forth, including the famines, all right, and because the Lord's servants shall eat, and that's pursuant to Isaiah the 65th chapter, okay? So, and I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there was sealed 144,000, right? Of all the tribes of the children of Israel, right? And it'll say, as you keep reading on down, the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000, the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000, the tribe of Gad was sealed 12,000, so on and so forth. When you get down here to verse 9, okay? This is so that you don't be deceived, people. All right, and it says here, and after this I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, right? So that would include women and children, okay? As well as other men that are not part of the elect. Of all nations, right? You see, it says of all nations. That's not talking about heathens, okay? That's not talking about Esau, that's not talking about, you know, uh, Edomites, Moabites, Ishmaelites. No. The Israelites are scattered into every nation, like James 1 and 1, to the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad. And people there, you, you, you would find over 50 precepts you can go to, talking about the scattering, all right, and the uh, dispersion of Israel around the four corners of the earth, okay? There'll be, you, you you probably find like 50 precepts you can go to, okay? So, no, it's talking about Israelite. We're going to prove that. 
Okay, so it says, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, and people, and tongues, right? We're going to go to the word kindreds here, right here in the blue letter, to show you who it's talking about. Who it's talking about what people that are scattered into the nations, all right? And it's going to be exact. So we'll go on to the word kindreds, right? It is right here. Strong's G, 5443. Foulet. Foulet. Okay, people, what does it say here? See, a tribe. See, in the New Testament, see, all persons, right, descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. See that? Do you understand, people? You see it now? So don't let nobody deceive you. There's no inclusion. Okay? The Bible is not universal. Okay? And uh, that guy, uh, the leader of uh, GOCC, Raka, he's bringing nothing but damnable heresies. But again, listen, the Lord is letting him do that. Okay? Because he's on the left-hand side. All right? And the Lord has, you know, the right hand, okay, the true prophets, okay? And it's up to you all out there using discernment, all right? Okay? So there it is, people. You know, it's very simple. There's, there's many things one can cover, okay? You know, why would, why would the Lord, you know, again, you know, why would he come to uh, to save the people that, that crucified him, okay? That have blasphemed the Lord's name, his son's name, okay? He's not coming back to save them. And I've already given you, you know, plenty of scriptures, you know, that actually prove that. Again, let me give you something before, for closing. Give me a minute. All right, this is Romans 9 and 4. I'll start at verse 3. For I, I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kingsmen, according to the flesh. See that? This is all about the seed of Israel, people, not the outer appearance. Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption. Again, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, both the first and the second, and the giving of the law, like we read, you know, Psalms 147, 19 and 20, it's not universal, it's given on to Jacob, on to Israel, and the service of the Most High and the promises. See that? The promises. Do you understand, people? Okay? The Lord has not cast away his people. Give me a minute. All right, this is Romans 11 and 1, and I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin, right? Apostle Paul, right? And God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. You see that? God, right? The Most High, Yahweh, right? Or his son, Yahweh Shai, right? Yahweh Bachim, Yahweh Shai, have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. You see that? You understand that? All right, people. I'm going to end it there. I'm out. I'm on to the next one. Hopefully you all edify. Shalom.